Hey yo, how's it going Drop Gun family? I'm Jonah and today I've got another tutorial for you. In this video, we're going to be breaking down the elements of a pop house track. This type of music has and will always be massively popular on a global scale, with artists like Avicii and Cash Cash pioneering the sound originally, and artists like Sagala and Lost Frequencies carrying the torch. We took influence from all of those artists to put together our new pack, Mainstream Pop House, after extremely high demand from our other Pop House packs. And for this project, I'm using only sounds from that pack. This one's gonna be juicy, so let's get right into it. So let's give this project one more listen and see what we're up against. So the first thing in this project I want to knock out of the way here is the chord progression. I have the chords laid out here in a piano midi right now, and the progression is in B major. Now since this is a pop house track, you want it to be more focused on the melody and the music theory. And for this one, we have sort of an 8 bar progression that works as half call, half response, or A and B, however you like to look at it. For the first half, we have a B major chord, an F sharp major chord, an A flat minor chord, and a E flat minor chord. And for the second half, we have E major, B major, and it sort of finishes on this resolving F sharp major chord. The reason I wanted to talk about the chord progression first is that now that we have these chords in place where they need to be, we can start to translate them to different sounds, different sequences, and we can start to see a song actually take shape. So with that, let's get into the synths on the verse and the buildup. And the first place to look would be these pluck chords on the intro. These chords are pretty much the same as what you saw on the piano, however, I've chopped them up to create sort of a common groove and a little bit of a rushing feeling before the downbeat. And this sound is in Serum from our pack. It's essentially two saw waves, both have five voices and are slightly detuned. One of them is offset just by one octave up and its level is brought a little bit down. Envelope 1 is the only thing really controlling the sound being routed to the cutoff of the main filter, where we have the MG Low 24 and some extra bumps and the resonance, the drive, and the fat. We use the Dimension Expander for some wide some EQ and compression really just to clean it up, and the delay and the reverb are really what make this sound here. So from there, we have a very large sound, so I started the processing with an EQ just pulling out the lows and a lot of the highs, making sure it fits into our mix. Next, I wanted to give back some of that presence with some saturation, so we have a mixture of Isotope Trash and Isotope Neutron 3 here. I use the Gentle Saturation preset in Trash, and I also use the Tape Saturator in Neutron 3. And one thing that's really important here is to work at medium to low mixes on your saturators, especially if you're going to be stacking multiple ones. You just want to make sure that they're agreeing with each other, and you're doing things to taste, not just slapping them through the saturators at full speed, full power. <laughs> 
I finished the sound off here with a little bit of Pro-Q3, mainly just the dynamic EQing, pulling down on all of those peaks to make sure it fits nicely. I also have some mid-side EQing going on, pulling out the high frequencies on the sides and bringing them down on the mid, and just kind of getting this sound wide and fit into the mix. So one of the next sounds that comes in, and another way I translate that chord progression to other sounds is this bass line right here. For the MIDI, I stripped all the notes back in the chord progression besides the root note. And I cut the notes to kind of follow the same style of groove as the plucks are playing. We have an 808 style serum bass here from our pack. This is a custom kind of sine wave from the pack that's really the whole character of the sound. And it's utilizing the 18 decibel low pass filter. You have this long envelope for envelope one, almost four seconds, all the way down to zero, kind of giving it that 808 feel. But the main envelope, the main attack of this bass is actually being controlled by LFO2. LFO2 is a fast ramp down, taking up only half the space of a 16th note window, which means it's actually like a 30 second note ramp down. It's routed to the course pitch of oscillation leader A to give it that really punchy attack, and it's also routed to the cutoff of the filter. However, instead of acting as an opening for the attack, it's actually closing the filter during the attack so that it maintains those extremely strong slappy frequencies that are coming from this coarse pitch movement. You can see in the effects we have some tube distortion getting an extra little push from LFO2 as well. We actually have another 24 decibel low pass filter here where envelope 1 is working as normal, routed to the cutoff, and just giving it that final piece of movement. For processing here, I started with Isotope Neutron 3, just getting some good saturation going at a low mix. We have tape saturation, tube on the mids, and warm on the lows. But the secret sauce here for this bass, and actually the bass in the drop, is Cashmere Essentials. I use small amounts of multiple features in this plugin to get the bass exactly where I wanted. This Harmax knob gives me a little bit of saturation. This Fuzz knob adds a little bit of air and some white noise to the top of the sound. This small amount of pressure is good as like multi-band dynamics, kind of like OTT. The excitement gives you a little bit of that high band saturation and excitement and I finished it off with a tiny bit of compression but I think it's really important when you use multi-function plugins like this to dial in the mix and make sure you're not just throwing it hundred percent figure out a good place for you between you know 50 to hundred percent that you can still hear all of the effects on the sound without it overbearing it Now the bass basically mimics here what it does in the drop, however, I don't want it to be as crazy, so I used an EQ to shave off some of those high and low frequencies and just maintain it when we want it to be calm. You can actually see as we move into the build up here, I actually automate the volume down on that EQ just to make sure that the bass is a little bit more reserved and we pull back for some more tension right before the drop. I also shortened the amount of notes that we're using, made them more sustained and long so that we can again pull back and keep that tension for the drop. Now with this type of music, you pretty much always hear live instruments of some sort. <laughs> It's one of the easiest ways to bridge electronic and pop music together, so let's talk about that. Here we have a guitar plug sample from our pack here in B major, and I really just pan this a little bit to the left and roll off the lows to make sure it fits in the space nicely. Another guitar sample we have here is also from our pack. It was in B major and it was a sample of different chords. It wasn't in the progression that I wanted it, so I cut it up and transposed it a little bit and placed it in the order I needed. So this is what we had originally. And after some editing, this is what we ended up with. Same thing here, small pan to the right, little EQ roll off on the bottom, and I'd say we could leave it at that. You could do this essentially with any sample that has chords as long as you transpose them correctly and really pay attention to where you're placing them. This mixture of sounds between the pluck, the bass, and the guitars leaves the perfect amount of space in tandem with the drums in order to fit a vocal over the beat. However, I do translate that chord progression into some more sounds over here on the buildup, so let's check that out. Let's start with this piano here, and we have a similar MIDI chord progression that we were doing before being played in Piano Tech 6 on a Steinway.
So I want to get that lo-fi, very characteristic sound out of it. The first thing I'm going to do is export it right to audio so I have a good audio piece. So I had the audio piece here. The next thing I did was add Isotope Neutron 3 compressor to make sure that those spikes from the attack of the piano keys were cut down and everything was leveled off. I moved into Isotope Vinyl to give it that old school feel. We have the 1970 vinyl sound here. And then I finish this off with the Sad Piano preset in Retro Color, which is a great plugin that adds vinyl noise, adds wobble, adds a little bit of dissonance. And then you're going to want to export that because you're going to have a lot of different artifacts from the vinyl noise. So I get that into one final audio piece, hit it with an EQ to make sure everything is nice and maintained, a little dynamic EQ, and then we have a really good piano here. And then let's move into the last two pieces here that are utilizing that chord progression. We have a pretty standard pad here from the pack just holding those chords sustained. One thing to point out is that I'm using one of my favorite plugins here called the Hollow Space Modulator and it's free. I have the Wide Chorus preset here which is definitely detuning it and almost giving it that Haas effect and it just feels very wide and atmospheric here during the buildup. Of course I finish it off with a tiny bit of FabFilter Pro Q just to maintain it and make sure it's not clashing with anything in the low mids. And finally here we have a bit more of a reserved pluck on an eighth note sequence. And this pluck serves much more of a purpose than you'd think. With pop house music, you might have a little bit more of a contrast between the verse and the drop in terms of energy and feel. The verse may have low energy, slow sequence sound and drums, leaving space and attention for the instruments and the vocal. Whereas the drop will tend to have faster sequences, higher energy, more commotion, you know what I mean. And sometimes it's hard to create a bridge for that contrast. But when you introduce a faster pluck like this with rising intensity on the buildup, you start to familiarize the listener, the audience with that faster feeling so that when it comes in during the drop, it's not so shocking. Whether you use your lead or any sort of faster sequence, it's always a good idea to kind of give a little preview of what the listener is going to be hearing or feeling during the drop. This pluck is from our pack. It's a solid two oscillator, eight voice each detune saw with some, you know, envelope one motion on the cutoff filter, but what's important to note here is that there's two automations going on. As you can see with Macro 3 over here, I'm actually going from 100% to 0%, and Macro 3 is just routed to the mix of the filter here, so I'm turning it off as we go in and it's opening up a little bit. Then as you look at Macro 1, it's routed to the cutoff of the main filter, and that's actually opening up the pluck, so as we get through the buildup, it's opening up a little bit and just introducing some more intensity. Now that just about covers all of the synths and instruments in the buildup, so let's move on to the synths and instruments and the drop. Now the big synth here and the one you've probably been waiting for is this big epic lead. The sequence on the lead here really adds to the groove of the sound and the notes we're playing give off a very reminiscent memorious tone to it. So let's move into Serum and even though this is a massive lead from our pack, it's only one oscillator. We're really slamming the saw wave here with 15 voices and a good amount of detune. Looking at the filter, we're mainly just using the 6 decibel low pass to get some extra drive and fat out of it. The main envelope has a tiny bit of extra attack to smooth out the front and a good amount of release to fill in some space in between those notes. We're also using using LFO1 here to induce a little bit of vibrato. It's routed to the fine tune of the oscillator and it's also routed to the detune. For the effects, we're using a ton of the diode 1 distortion, however, the envelope 1 is controlling the mix. And the high pass filter and EQ are really just working to maintain those extra buzzing frequencies. The most important part of this lead is actually the processing. I started by running it through two parallel instances of distortion with kilohertz distortion and isotope neutron with medium mixes giving it a little bit of beef, followed by basically two instances of multiband dynamics with isotope neutron 3 compressor and OTT. My compressor is really just shaving off those top two three decibels of peaks and the OTT is only mixed at 13%. <laughs> The 
There's a very small room of reverb here just to fit it in a nice space. And I have some dynamic EQing with compression and expansion, just fitting it into the mix, bringing out the frequencies that I really want to be brought out. I do also have this much longer reverb bus here routed to the lead and some of the instruments and this is just kind of filling in the empty spaces in between without getting too loud. I did make sure to maintain that reverb bus with a little bit of EQ, make sure there's no muddy reverb frequencies in the lows, and I also sent it right back into the group with this synth to make sure that it's side chaining. And with that, let's next look at these chords that are on the drop, which are also a translation from the original piano MIDI that I made the chord progression in. So here with the MIDI, we have basically the same thing we were doing with the plucks and the buildup, only these are longer, more sustained. We have a very lush saw preset from our pack here. 11 voices nicely detuned with the main character of the sound being mainly portrayed by this MG Low 18 filter, which is giving it that like old school vintage kind of retro synth chord feel. There's a mixture of different effects here. The Dimension Expander is doing a great job of just kind of giving it a small room to sit in. The EQ and compressor are rolling off those lows, leveling it out, and the distortion is giving it a little bit of extra drive. But the reverb and delay here are what really come together to make these chords feel large. And of course, similarly to the lead, I process this to all hell. So let's start by looking at the saturation. We have Isotope Trash and Isotope Neutron 3 here, again with the gentle saturation on Trash and a medium mix. And then we have a good amount of tape saturation and Isotope Neutron 3 just really bringing out those high frequencies. Next, I have a small amount of Valhalla Supermassive, which is an amazing, wow. incredible free reverb plugin that you absolutely have to get. I'm using the Reverb 2000 preset here, which is kind of giving me like another feel of like vintage reverb. Filling in that last little bit of space that's left for the chords to sit. And finally, I have some surgical dynamic EQ here to make sure everything's maintained, widening up the high frequencies. Now, moving into the bass, we have a nearly identical channel from the verse, only using a different preset and processed a tiny bit differently. The sequence is exactly the same as before, but this is a little bit more of like an open feeling 808 with a different sort of sine wave that we also created for this pack. Envelope 1 is a bit more controlled and Envelope 2 is the same thing with that ramp down, just not going all the way to the top. We're again using LFO 2 to make sure we roll off those highs on the slappy attack, but we're also using it to give that slappy attack on the coarse pitch here. We have the tube distortion pumping with LFO2 giving some extra punch to the drive and rolling off some of those new crazy highs on the top end doesn't hurt either. The processing is really similar to the other bass. Like I said before, we have some tube and tape saturation and warm saturation going on with Neutron 3. We have Cashmere Essentials with essentially the same settings here because I really liked the fuzz and the high frequency buzz that we got out of this before. The big thing here is that I finished the sound off with some dynamic mid-side EQ. We have some dynamic cuts that are making sure the low and the low mids don't spike too high on this 808. And we also have a side cut here that's cutting off the sides all the way up to 100 hertz and making sure that none of the sub frequencies frequencies are sitting in the stereo field and only in mono. That EQ that was on here before is now opened up and it's only being used as an automation during the transition to cut off those lows and leave space for a fill. Now let's move into this last half of this drop where some live instruments are incorporated. As I stated before, any type of instrument really helps bring your track to life, even if you use bagpipes. I don't know about that, but if you made a song with bagpipes, I think that would be pretty sick. Here's a nice brass sample in B major from our pack, and this is really just taking center stage during this section, and it works.
You could saturate this, add reverb, compression, however you want, but I did notice that the sample is really consistent and really clean as is, so I made sure to just throw on some Pro Q3, cut off some of the lows, roll off those hissy highs, and I didn't see anything that alarmed me, so I left it at that. And the final instrument in this track are these staccato strings that come in, and they're from the Logic Pro sampler. The process for doing this MIDI was actually very simple. I used the bass notes from the original chord progression and just put them on quarter note stabs. Next, I took all of those notes up an octave to get one octave up, and I took them up one more octave. And then in between those two octaves, I placed the seventh note right here because I knew that would be consistent throughout the whole track, and we got a really nice wide orchestral feeling to it. I made sure to hit these with some saturation to give them a little extra bulk because they were sitting pretty far back in the mix. I used this very small room reverb to give them their own space, made sure to pull back on the dry since I was giving it some wet. And I finished it off with some dynamic pro Q to clean them up and widen it up on the high frequencies. You also see the dynamic expander going on here to make sure that those airy frequencies are coming out on every note. And that about does it for the synths on the drop and the synths and instruments in the track entirely. It's a little bit more involved than the tech house or deep house style videos I've done in the past. But you'll find that when you write the chord progression first to derive the rest of the track off of, it actually comes pretty easy and the song basically writes itself. Now we've covered the pop tart, pop -tart. the pop part, let's do the house. And to do that, we're going to look at the drums. Let's start with the kick. And usually when it comes to these tech and deep house tracks, I would tell you to find a kick that has more low mid presence and feels more punchy. But for this type of music, you have a lot more focus on the high frequencies with all of these instruments and chords and plucks, so it doesn't hurt to get a kick that also cuts through those frequencies with some of that plasticky texture on the high mids. For this kick, I did use a tiny bit of Cymatics Diablo Light, which is a great free plugin. It just adds some clip and some punch to any bass or kick that you want to add it to, and it does a nice job of rounding out the punch in this kick. And we have a stack of a few claps here. The first clap is this kind of high frequency layer. Roll off most of the lows on an EQ here. The second clap is this one that's covering a little bit more of the low frequencies, but it still has some of those high frequencies in there. But the separation of the frequencies in the two is enough for me to be able to layer them. I'm also using the Kilo Hearts Haas effect here on this low mid clap, which is basically just giving it some more right left presence, spacing out the timing of each trigger on the right and left a little bit to make sure it does leave that space for the top clap and just make the clap feel wider in general. The third layer is actually this kind of pre shifted layer. If you want to know about how to do that, we have an Instagram video about pre-shifted claps coming out pretty soon, so follow us on Instagram. And on the group, we do have Isotope Neutron 3 Compressor that's just making sure that it doesn't get too loud, kind of smashing it, bringing the attack in, and making the whole clap feel bigger. I also have a very small room of reverb on here, obviously just giving a tiny bit of space to the clap. I made sure that the timing on the reverb is only an eighth note and it's a very low mix. Now moving back into the verse, we have more reserved versions of both the kick and the clap. The kick is more transient, it's shorter, and it also has automations to cut out some of the lows and the highs. For the clap, we actually utilize a different version of that first layer, tighten it up with some transient shape, lower it in volume as well, and then we're using that same pre-shifted clap layer. So basically, it's kind of very similar to what's going on in the drop, I just made sure to do a much more reserved version of it to leave that focus on the instruments and the vocal. So let's look at these top drums during the drop. We have some really tight shakers and tambourines here just being controlled by some transient shapers.
Always make sure to pan these right and left. And then we have a pretty standard house music open hi-hat here. It's definitely a bit more reserved and soft given the nature of the song. If you notice at the end of every two bars, we have a bit of an open flare hi-hat here, just giving some variance to the beat. The verse is definitely a little bit more simple. We have a closed hi-hat here, very transient, very maintained, and it's just on an eighth note sequence, just keeping the groove during this section. We also have this tambourine during the buildup with a little bit of reverb that just kind of works as a ride cymbal and helps build that tension during the build. Got a few crash cymbals here to break the tension. A couple good fills from our pack sprinkled through. And undeserving of its own chapter of the video, here's a little bit of white noise that's actually really solidifying the energy on the drop. And with that, my friends, you have all the basics, everything you need to make a fantastic mainstream pop house track. Pair it with your favorite vocalist and send it up the charts. But before we sign off, let's hear this track one more time. That's going to be all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for checking out this video. I hope this helps you down the path to start creating pop house bangers. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you learned anything here today. And if you have any suggestions or want us to elaborate further, please feel free to comment below. Remember to check out our new mainstream pop house pack, which I used in this video. And follow up on our social media accounts in the description for more tutorials, packs, and to stay in the loop. Keep your chin up, keep your head down, make bangers, and we will see you guys next time.